This is the center section of the museum. All kinds of flanges came out, which created rooms for various sections uh, and divisions, so there is a difference both chrono chronologically and atmosphere of one to the other. I mean, here in the center of the center room was a prehistoric tomb. Uh, Neolithic, somewhere in the seven, 8,000 BC area from Al Maria. Uh, this Cristo, where'd that come from, baby? I don't even remember. Well, we were in back of a antique shop in Mijas, oh, and you were fooling around as usual. It was a garbage usual. dump. It looked like well, a garbage I'm real dump. real good with garbage dumps. And you looked around, and you were not digging, but you looked at one piece, and there was a piece, an arm, a little fingers or a wrist sticking out of the ground of wood. And you said, what's that? And you reached in, pulled it, and it was attached to another piece. And there was another piece of wood on the other side, and we asked, whose this was, and he said, the owner of the place said uh, it had been destroyed and thrown out during the Civil War as part of the destruction by uh, the communists at that particular time of anything church-like. Uh, and then we had the area dug up and this piece resurrected, which was missing. It's all made out of a single block of wood but divides into, as I recall, something like 20, 22 pieces of wood. It's just gorgeous. And there it is. So we use these are the actual tiles and the walls of the stable, letting them show through the museum and then contrast with the black. The entire thing was superbly decorated, Madame. I think, you know. Thank you, kind sir. I had help. I never walked in I here and I didn't have this surge of pride right away. It wasn't who came in. It was how we used it, and uh, just pride of saving the things and showing them as they were. Then, how are we going to exist in the museum? Uh, that was a good one. A good question. Well, at the time, the law was such that uh, uh, if a canvas went to a charity, you could have a deduction for it. And somehow or other, we wheedled this into uh, give us a hand. This was it. Huh? This is the only piece, by the way, that I recall was ever stolen out of the museum. We never had guards in it. We never went in with people. We let them alone, figuring it's their own history and it's feeling we want to evoke. And it was a very special touch of the showing. And that was stolen. And this was the only thing of all the things in the museum that disappeared. Somebody from Brooklyn, I know specifically who would come in and so on, and then a day later we saw it was gone. It's a wooden hand from a statue and goes back into the 14th century. And it just gave us the idea, gave you the idea of a donation, like give us a hand. And from that, you wrote a piece up uh, of Give Us a Hand for the yeah, Museum. It was a nice brochure. And we will give you a canvas, and again, give you a canvas for yourself, and a canvas to donate to charity, and you're going to get the tax deduction, and blah, blah, blah. And before you knew it, we had 100 people at about $2,500, and that sort of paid the expenses of the museum in the running. Just one of those. <laughs> I don't know if it was luck or it was, uh, it came up at the moment and Dumb it worked. Luck. It, to me, it was as rich as any part of our existence in Spain, the whole experience. Uh, I, you're right, as far as work is concerned, yeah, it was a tremendous amount of work. It wasn't worries so much. But I think the work in some way must have been healthy, although I kept on fibrillating and had my troubles. What did it last from 1982 to 1990 when we decided the heart was just so bad and having so much problems that if I didn't get the better medical attention... So would, we packed up and we left. And we left. Tell me about the museum to you and what it meant to you. Oh, I had a ball. And even as we left, I still had about 50 ideas of 
thing as I would like to do to add yeah. to them. But uh, it was great. I, I, I was proud of it. Including, including the lunches every single day for whatever select few came well, up? Well, that's true. We did feed an awful lot of people. <laughs> it was kind of fun. Well, we were well removed from the coast, and there was no social life that we were promoting at all. And so it became ours. Those who were interested in antiquities and were interested in uh, the feelings of their past and associations and so on were the only ones who came up. It was a long way. It was 50 miles. It was in areas they'd never been. Uh, most of them never went inland that far. And then to arrive at the house, they were led down into the birds of prey, into the animal oh, pens, the bird pens, that. remember? Our, our zoo, yeah. The idea being that you wanted to get their adrenaline running a little, and we had these gigantic, these gigantic uh, bird cages that were 15 foot high and about uh, 15 to 20 foot wide and maybe 70, 80 feet long with the eagle owls and the owls the uh, various other birds of prey. Okay.